Yeah. Wow. I'm almost ready. It's getting cold. What do you think? Hmm. This is how I dress for our Texas winners. Actually, this is one of my favorite things from Goodwill I ever bought. Yeah, this is super duper warm. And I'm getting ready. Why? Because we're talking 12, 12 degrees in Texas. Three to four inches of snow. Yeah, howdy. So, I'm going to get on here real quick because I went out and checked on the chickens and did my gig. And then came back and checked again. And you know what? Thumper is still working down there in the Loyalty Islands. And he's thumping every hour. And he's thumping hard, about a 5.0 on a Richter scale. And that's continuing now to cause the perturbations all the way up in Japan, up into Alaska, and other places where if you bang long enough and hard enough, you're actually going to get other places to go ahead and bang with you. It's kind of like this dong, dong, dong. Get a liquid inside of a ball and start banging on it. I'm not sure why we're getting a consistent hit over there, but we're probably up to 60 earthquakes in an area smaller than Texas that would be considered probably devastating. Devastating. Buildings would be falling, but it's out in the middle of the ocean. Not in the middle. Actually, it's on the edge of the ocean down by the Loyalty Islands on this portion that when the earth expands and changes, it expands in certain places, and that's one of them. Now, the problem is, if you keep pumping up something or keep moving something and shaking it up in one spot, well, sooner or later, you're going to go, eh, and it's going to open up or expand and, and cause waves, tsunamis, and uh, all sorts of things. But the problem is that if you keep hitting on the inside of a, a bell or a ball, and you have a liquid inside of it, those perturbations, those reverberations, those rhythmic pulses... Well, after a while, they start causing some havoc. You might say some turbulence, some buildup of pressure where they're running into each other. As this one goes out and starts to come back, and this one's going out this way, and you get these compressions, you know, like you could expect in any physical model of what liquids do when you start bouncing them in a certain boom. Um, some great experiments online. I'm not going to go show them to you because there's some really good guys that do all this stuff for us and teach us all this. And I highly recommend you listen to them. Dutch Sense, he's got some really fine, fine stuff out there. And he gets picked on all the time. And I don't rightly care. I get picked on all the time too. But Dutch Sense is one of those guys that, yep, yeah, so he's right and sometimes he's wrong. But the idea is you got to look at all these different views and kind of figure them out. Hey, Michael, nice to meet you. Yeah, this is crazy right now, man. We're talking about freezing temperatures, 18 degrees, 20 degrees over in Houston. We're talking about weather down here like um, nobody that's alive has got any good memory of. So what's that mean for you up north? Hmm. Somebody told me they had sunshine the other day. They said, it's just beautiful up north there. Ohio, nice and warm. Maybe winter, winter, winter might be late getting there. Or, or let's put it this way. Let's just suppose, such as in 1815 and 16, when there was so much particulate matter in the air, like there is right now, coming across the oceans from the volcanoes and everything over there in the Kamchatka mountain ranges in Alaska along the... Uh, Aleutian Island. Yeah, those are all volcanoes, guys. And all those things are pumping up along Japan. All that particle matter in the 2.5 my goodness. Let's just say this. It isn't the best thing you want to be breathing in coming in off the coast of California right now. And it's coming in with a lot of clouds, a lot of rain, a lot of everything else. It's particular matter. And a lot of it hopefully will stay tied up and attached to all that moisture, which is having to condense better. And it's making all these things work so much better if you were looking at it from a certain angle. Better for the potential with these high 
atmospheric pressure zones to cause earthquakes because that's a lot of pressure pushing down on the earth which is actually you got a big lithosphere on the top and then you got a bunch of magma in the middle kind of so it's floating to a large degree it's floating so when you push down on the earth crust it's somewhat pliable even though it's rock and mountain ranges and stuff like that it's just how much force god's hand has a lot of force if you want to call it that but when you start putting a extremely high density atmospheric pressure where that might come from well it might come from the sun or the outer cosmos and push on the outside of our earth like it did the other day at magnitude 10 more than normal density and that's low speed admittedly 300 kilometers a second what's that that's peanuts right yeah. drive your car 300 kilometers a second and it has somebody film it for me with high speed film. 300 kilometers a second means you'll be around the world by the time they pull the shutter and get out of the way. Hope you're a good driver. That's how fast that is. Now, supposing, just supposing, the Earth was going to go like this and like this and like this and like this, just like a big wave, just having problems and and then all of a sudden, you also notice that all these big storms cause a, a shift. And these big shifts, like what's happened on Pluto, like what's already happened on Uranus, like what's happening on, um, geez, Jupiter's giant storms have changed shape and they're not going the same way they used to. And oh my goodness, why are we special? Why aren't we going to have these problems? Why aren't we able to forecast? Oh, wait, we can. I, f I forgot. The we part of that. Is that the W-E, which would be you all out there? Or the W-I-I, -I, as in me, M-I-I, -I, these two eyes. That I, the spirit, human consciousness. Yeah, all of us humans. We're all humans. Though I shall say on days like these, I sometimes wonder how to appease the endless questioning without any facts and for those who wonder so this broadcast lacks facts this is just a fictional tale the story of Wibbley and Wub don't take it seriously goodness no mm -mm. that get you censored that get you banned that get you kicked off somebody took you seriously <laughs> That'd be stupid. Why would I want to lose my chance to be on this wonderful platform? I just, just something, this platform. Well, what's good about it is I get to see you guys. Shannon, Suzanne. Yeah. I get to get some messages out. It's called dialogue. And then you take it out and you share it with somebody else and that becomes double dialogue. And then we share it again, it becomes triple dialogue. And exponentially until all of a sudden... There's a global dialogue. What's the dialogue about? That means government tells us something. The propaganda out of the news media, the TV tells us something. That's, that's, that's still narrative. Same story, seems like. Kind of like now, especially, huh? Since the media got in their, their favorite. How's that? Now we don't have to worry about conflict. The media can sit there and not be a problem for the administration. Yeah. What did Kennedy say? John F. Kennedy. You know, the one that said something about we shouldn't have any secrets. The media, please, if we do something wrong, come. Tell the public. It's the media's job to tell the public the truth. Oh, wait a second. Oh, they killed Kennedy. Oh, wait. Oh, did they kill the truth at the same time? Do you realize that it's possible to kill the truth? Well, at least. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Here's how you do this. You put all the records into secrecy. And that way nobody can read the truth. You didn't kill it. You put it to bed. You put it in suspended animation. And then someday, if somebody still gives a garbage crap about it, they'll pull it out and go, hey, let's read about something that happened. How many years are going to hold it before we tell us? Will I be dead? 
and gone before I find out I was right all along. That that one bullet didn't just fly around and tap everybody on the head, on the shoulder, in the arm, pass through a little wall of metal here and there, and jump out on that gurney. He remembered that bullet, that really special, special bullet. Well, there's lots of those around. Somebody tried to murder our dear ex-president, if you want to call him that, Trump, using a drone and a high-powered weapon just the other day. He hit the bulletproof glass that had been installed, thankfully. Shot from high, not possible by a human, except in control of a drone. Why isn't the public hearing about this? I don't know. Nobody's interested, right? I mean, that's just the old president. And we're all focused on the new president. And Cammy, oh my gosh. Isn't it wonderful to be in a democracy where everybody's vote counts and we now have an administration? It is incredible. So, if I could possibly convince you, I want you to go ahead and question the narrative. Help us have a global dialogue. That means you guys over in Italy, you know, they busted everybody for using Leonardo, the, the satellite, to transmit information from America all the way over there to those guys who were able then to pass it along and manipulate it and send it back. That that story in the book from the last chapter. Remember the last chapter? I, I think I mentioned that or wrote about it. Oh, that's right. You guys don't get to read the whole chapter. You just get excerpts. We're going to fill it in later with the facts, the rest of the facts. That's the thing about when you're writing a book. And you're getting excerpts out there. I just bought two, three, okay, three, two by four by twelves. Number two, oh, ah, no shit. Three, two by four, 12 foot number two spruce for $35? Wow. That's nice. That's great. That's absolutely incredible. Why is it so good? I got tons of wood. <laughs> I got 100,000 square feet of wood piled up. And every time I hear that, I just get giddy. Because I can save you so much money if you come here. And give you materials to build houses with. That you could go off and build a tiny house with. Windows. Doors. Made out of wood you can't even begin to afford. No knots. Grown for 150 years. And if you do that for me. If you come here and promise me. Show yourself a little bit of truth. You have a little bit of money to put down for deposit, that's great. It helps me get more people in. If you want to work just a little bit, spend a couple days, help work around here, load some stuff up so you can load your trailer up so I don't have to do it because I don't want to load your trailer. Design your house and build it for you. I want to help you load the trailer, help you design the house, and help you from a distance take care of building it. Because you see with this little phone right here you're looking at, Darby can go anywhere in the world. I can look at your little house. I can tell you, no, you got to have the wall pointed up, not sideways. Or, hey, no, stop. No, 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 that. Don't do that. Stop. And just a video. And a group of you are doing it, I can give you a whole seminar from a distance. You don't have to come to Texas. One of you might have to come in and get the parts and pieces and go back there. And I'll help you put it together. This is not that hard, kids. You can grow a pure salvage outpost without me having to be there holding your hand the whole time. Get some of the other old timers. I'd have got to be not the only old timer out there trying to do this. Trying to share knowledge, life skills. How do you build a home out of trash? How do you build it with the simplest of simplest tools? I mean, a circular saw, maybe a table saw. Uh, I'd say you need probably a good sawzall. Um, a drill. A um, ratchet driver. Um, tape measure is nice. I try not to use them much. The level's good. I try not to use those either these days. I'm just trying to build how it feels. So my stuff looking a little crooked sometimes. But again, what I'm trying to show you is it does not have to be perfect. Perfection is not required for excellence. Excellence is you build a house that's good enough to house your family, keep them warm, feed them, take care of them. That's excellence. Anything after that? Hey, that's just show. If you don't have a house, if you can't keep your kids out of the rain, keep them warm, feed them. I mean, that's a gut-wrenching pain, kids. I was actually near that one time, living up in the mountains. Seattle area. <laughs> a 
College education couldn't get a job for the life of me. And uh, my stepson was Nathan, five. Karina, about seven. Didn't have enough food to start with, so I wasn't eating. I had to make sure they ate. Didn't have running water, so we tried to wash out in that glacier-fed river in Issaquah, Washington. Population 160. Froze our little asses off, and that didn't work. And I tried boiling water. No, so we went to KOA campground once a week with two fifty each, two dollars fifty cents each, and we'd go in that shower. Nathan and I take the men's shower, and Karina and Joyce took the other shower, and we just lavished ourselves in a half hour warm water, and washed ourselves off, and look forward to the next Saturday when we got to go wash again. We can do better. As a veteran, I made it through my times, my life, but there's a whole bunch of them that aren't making it. It doesn't take much. A little roof, a place to go take a shower, a place to get together and share a stove and eat. These are the things I speak of from the heart. So as it gets cold out there and you start thinking about this stuff. And I told you, start thinking about what you'd like to do if you knew you had seven days left. You're five days into it. Did you do my I love you exercises? I love you. And I do. I love all of you out there, even the trolls. Why? You're inspirational. We're all one, one consciousness. How somehow or another we're going to be able to unite both good and evil, I don't know. Maybe it won't happen. The yin and the yang of it. The male and the female of it. And I've managed to marry the massive masculine identity and the gentle female identity in myself as much as I can. And we don't war anymore. We're at peace inside. You? If you had a voice like my daddy in your head for 55 years, it'll drive you crazy. And some of you, that's your mom. I didn't have to worry about that. Nothing my mom ever said was truth. It's easy not to pay attention to that because you find out after a while, every word is a lie. Don't bother remembering the words that liars speak. The moment they lie, they steal honor. They steal all the love you could ever possibly have. They steal your faith. They steal everything you can hope for the moment they utter a lie. I have a poem about that. I may, if I find it, read it someday. But it does start like that. The smile with which you caught my eye. Coagulated as you lied and dried in ugly brown deceit as you continued on. That's a romantic poem. I've had a few of those ladies in my life. They look so pretty, so sweet. Until that, well, just those lies coagulated on just the mere opening of their mouth became a putrid event. Anybody that lies, I want you to know, your breath stinks of hell. Oh, did I hurt somebody's feelings? If I did, it's a liar. I'm okay with that. Wake up. Great day ahead, guys. I'm gonna put my hoodie back on. I'm gonna go out and walk around and see how the water's flowing on my property before the snow gets here. You know, we had campers out here last night and they're camping underneath that giant rock down there. I gotta go see this. I didn't get to see him down there. But anyway, Pamela, nobody should have any use for liars. Nobody. Thank you. If you've had as many in my, as I have in my life, you develop an appreciation for it, I will say. Um, 
because I believe the lies of my love story that her dad, six foot four, got out every morning and did qigong for an hour. I admired that man. I loved her so much that any man that could have that child and raise such a beautiful girl, I wanted to be like him. And so I learned what qigong was. I'd never heard of it before. And it inspired me after she left. You know, she left me for a younger man. About I was 17 years her elder. She left for a man 17 years her younger, who was just two years older than the child she never had. With 23 years, 21 years of child support owed on a warrant out for her arrest in Massachusetts. But actually she was, well, the fantasy love story that I knew was from Scotland. She was a princess from Scotland and she was beautiful and she had lost her baby to cancer way back when she was 20 and had a total hysterectomy, which would have made it very much impossible to have the two young boys in their teens that I knew for five years to be her godsons, which in fact were not. They were her real sons, but she played it that well. Yeah. Amazing. So I want to say male or female, and I've had my best friends as males lie to me too. So don't, don't think I'm picking on females. I've been lied to by all genders in between and otherwise. No room for liars. No room for cheats. So part of this week while you're looking at yourself in the mirror, if one of those things you see and you go, I love you, but you're a liar. Well, when you say, but you're a liar, stop. You can't tell yourself you love you in the mirror if you're a liar. That'd be a lie. You can't love a liar. You'll have a good day.